I'm Dave Kassler, KE0OG, with episode 12 of Ask Dave. I'm here to answer your questions about amateur radio, geared particularly toward those new to the hobby. Today's topic comes from Tim in Michigan. His question is simple and is one that is asked by all new hams. Now that I've got my license, what do I do next? Tim has passed all the exams and is now on the FCC records as an amateur extra. I'm going to start out by offering the advice I give all new hams. Join the ARRL. I know the $49 annual membership fee can be a bit daunting, but it's worth it. The key value is the monthly magazine, QST, which is aimed at all hams. There's something in each issue for hams at every level from beginner to expert. They also publish a rather large library of technical and general interest books. They offer many operating awards and offer both a paper and electronic QSL service. They are also the voice of the radio amateur at the federal level, both to the FCC and Congress. I'm only scratching the surface of what the ARRL does on behalf of amateur radio. Having joined the national level organization, the next step is to find and join a local amateur radio club. You can go to the ARRL webpage at www.arrl.org slash find hyphen a hyphen club and locate a club near you, sometimes several clubs. You'd be amazed at how many ham clubs there are. Given that many clubs focus on one aspect of ham radio, you may have to do some club shopping to find the club that's just for you. There are also clubs that the ARRL designates as general interest clubs, meaning they offer a wide variety of specialties. I do caution you that you may have to be persistent until you feel like a full-fledged member. If the club is not welcoming, either try again or try another. The best clubs welcome you with open arms, and you'll find hams there who can mentor you. The next essential step is to get on the air. I know this sounds obvious, but there are many people who obtain licenses but never use them. Remember, if your goal is to attain a certain license class, once you attain that license, you're not done. Rather, you're just beginning. It's like saving up money so you can go see a movie. You do odd jobs, meet your monetary goal, and then buy the ticket. Is the ticket the end goal? No, it's simply your admission to enjoy a wonderful movie. Check out the Ask Dave playlist as it includes several videos about getting on the air. But I want to move on to more of Tim's question. Tim is a goal-oriented person and likes to have milestones and measurable achievements. Getting a license certainly falls into that category, but as Tim asks, what do I do now? Your amateur radio license is a ticket to a new world. I'm going to concentrate on things a new amateur can do that are specifically interesting to those who like goals and measurements. You may enjoy participating in public service. You can use your license to support your community. For example, our club provides communications for the Hard Rock 100 race, the Imogene Run, and the Grand Mesa 100, all enjoyable events. And you can serve your community through the Amateur Radio Emergency Service, or ARES, or the Radio Amateur Civil Emergency Service, or RACES. You'll find that throughout the country, hams are organized to assist so-called served agencies, usually emergency services, in pre-planned ways. And since most of the public service work is done on VHF, this is something you can do right away as a new technician. Be prepared to dive in and learn how it's done and get the training and practice you need to be a full contributor in time of need. Another way to contribute although this often requires a general license, is the national traffic system. The NTS is pretty much as old as the ARRL. Back when the ARRL was formed in 1914, spark gap transmitters ruled the airwaves. Spark transmitters are terribly inefficient. 
and the receivers of the time were not good, so range was severely limited. Hiram Percy Maxim and Clarence Tuska organized the American Radio Relay League, specifically for the purpose of relaying messages from station to station with the goal of building a network that spanned the nation. And they succeeded. And that's why the American Radio Relay League has the word relay in its title. Given the changes in communications capabilities in the last 100 years, the national traffic system, which carries the relayed traffic, is much smaller than before, but it still moves messages. It becomes particularly important during emergencies, such as floods and fires, as a way of relaying health and welfare traffic. Do you like specific numeric goals? Something you can put an unambiguous number on? Then consider throwing yourself into radio sport. Well, what's that? It's the competitive side of amateur radio. This again is a reason for joining the ARRL as QST can keep you on top of all these activities. Let's talk contesting. Many organizations sponsor operating events called contests. Each contest is different in the specifics, but the goal is always the same. Get on the air and get as many contacts as you can with the other people involved in the contest. Although the ARRL maintains that field day is not really a contest, it operates just like one. Often field day, held on the last weekend in June, involves multiple amateurs getting together as a group to work the contest. Our club here puts on a pretty impressive field day. It's the biggest operating event of the year, and the number of stations on the air is massive. When contacting another station, the exchange consists of call sign, ARRL section, and class of station. Roger that, please copy. Three Alpha Mississippi, Three Alpha Mike Sierra. You with them? There are many, many other contests. In fact, Every issue of QST has the Contest Corral, listing as many contests as they can fit on the page. You can scan down the list and put those that interest you on your calendar. Some contests are voice only, others CW only, and others are digital. Some of my favorites are the national and various state CUSO parties. I participated in the California CUSO party last October and had great fun. I grew up in California and enjoy contacting hams living in places I've been. Your participation in a contest will net you a score, and you can compare your score with others in the same contest. Improving your score is a specific goal you can work toward. Another popular activity for every ham is talking with stations in other countries. We call this DXing because the CW abbreviation for distance is DX. A DX station is one in any country other than your own. For a USA ham, it's easy to work hams in Canada. Those American hams who live on the East Coast will pick up European stations easily. But other countries can be elusive. The ARRL has created an award called the DX Century Club. And to earn it, you must have confirmed contacts with at least 100 DXCC entities, which are mostly countries. But land masses far separated from the mother country may also be entities, for example, Alaska and Hawaii. There are more than 300 entities. Once you work and confirm your first 100, you get a certificate. Then you can keep adding stickers to that certificate as you increase your country count. Everyone likes to talk about working a new one. Some countries or entities have so few hams, if any, that sometimes hams group together to mount a de-expedition to the much sought after entity. For example, as recounted in this QST article about a de-expedition to Nevesa Island. Actually working DX can take skill and excellent timing because you're often competing with many other hams who want to work the same station. The ARRL even publishes a separate magazine about contests called the National Contest Journal. In addition, the League and other organizations offer various operating awards. 
For example, the ARRL offers the Worked All States Award for, you guessed it, a confirmed contact with every one of the 50 states. And CQ Magazine sponsors an operating award to those who contact hams in the various U.S. counties. There are 3,077 counties and equivalents in the U.S. And the first award tier starts at 500 counties. And it's not just U.S. hams either. I once received an email from a Swedish ham, SM7ZDI, who found out I live in Uray County here in Colorado. He needed Uray, so we set up a time to make the contact in Morse code. We succeeded, and he got to add Uray County to his list. Speaking of CW, let's talk about the Morse code. It's not required for any grade of license, but it's still very much on the air. I take my hat off to the Straight Key Century Club, or SKCC. Their goal is to popularize the Morse code, specifically using hand-operated keys, such as straight keys, bugs, or sideswipers. Members tend to congregate around certain frequencies, for example, 14.050 MHz on 20 meters, and the code is slow enough that a CW newcomer can get some on-the-air practice. Each member has an assigned number, and the goal is to work as many others as possible. Again, here's something you can count. My SKCC number is 13205. I participate because I want to get my code speed back up where it was when I was a novice 40 years ago. So if you haven't tried CW, check out the frequencies used by the SKCC and try your hand at slow code. You can set milestones for yourself in terms of CW proficiency. Again, the ARRL offers awards for copying code at certain speeds during the W1AW qualifying runs, and you are always working toward the next higher speed level. Okay, did I whet your appetite? I hope so. I've barely begun to describe all the things you can do with ham radio. Today's focus has been on things you can measure, the radio sport portion of the hobby. Today's photograph was taken on Christmas Day near Moab, Utah. That's the Colorado River in the foreground, with the sheer cliffs of Professor Valley in the background. And this is proof it does snow in the desert. Please subscribe so you can get notification of future videos. If you found something in this video that was particularly helpful, you can put something in the tip jar, either using the YouTube method on my channel page or the PayPal link on my website at ke0og.net. Send questions to me via a comment to this video or directly at ke0og.net slash ask hyphen Dave. Until next time, 73.